Yeah. <laughs> it's up with a split screen. Well, welcome everybody to the uh, to the monthly brutal tie off between the world's greatest fly tire and me. <laughs> <laughs> that could have gone <laughs> either way. I saw you waiting for what I was going to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to tie. We had a request for an emerger. Um, a couple podcasts ago, we thought, yeah, that we haven't done an emerger, I don't think, in the in the tie-offs. I've done them some myself, but um, this is a Tim pick the pattern, and it is one of the, you know, by far one of the best emergers, period. Um, the Gary LaFontaine, um, what is his official name for it? Uh, emergent Caddis Pupa. I think emergent, I, I think emergent sparkle pupa is what he what emergent he calls sparkle it. pupa, yeah, and, and it's um, it's a, it's an older pattern um, that hasn't changed much, you know. I mean, a lot of times people come up with patterns and everybody makes their own variations and experiments with it and improves on it. But um, personally, I tie it exactly the way um, Gary tied it, and. Um, and it just works. I, I haven't had any re reason to change it. If I can find fish taking emerging caddis, I can usually catch fish on this fly if it's the right size. Yeah, and I I, I, I go a step further, Tom. I, I kind of use it as, um, gosh, almost a searching pattern at times. Uh, hmm. You know, whether I, I see caddis or not, it, it just it works in a rig, uh, especially in a, you know, a tandem rig with something with some weight to it and then uh, usually that above it or trailing behind it and it just year round. So man. sometimes you fish it submerged. Sometimes you fish it deep. Oh, oh yeah. A lot of times I'll fish it deep. Uh -huh. um, okay. Not, not, not up by the surface as a, as a, a merger, more, more like a, you know, a pupa that's, that's uh, freshly pupated down at the bottom rising uh -huh. up to the top. So, okay. Um, yeah. He also has need... a, a, a deep pupa, I think is a deep sparkle pupa and, you know, they're ones with, you can put beads on them, you can put weight in there, do do whatever. But th for me, I don't, I don't know about you, but this one's weightless for me. Um, yeah, I yeah. actually fish this as a dry fly. Um, really? And if I Yeah, yeah, all the time. I fish it as a dry. And if I'm going to, you know, it's in the film, but it, it's still, you can see yeah, it because of the yeah. deer hair wing. And if I'm going to fish deeper, then I'll put on his deep pupa. Yeah. Because it has a little weight oh, to wow. it. No, yeah. I, I, I really fish this almost exclusively as a subsurface fly. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So anyway, for those of you who are listening, you know they don't ask us how to fish this because you can fish it anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we both fish it different ways. I fish it as a dry when there's fish rising to emergent cast. Tim fishes it more as a searching pattern with, with some weighted flies to bring it down. Yeah, yeah. And one of one cool. of my I'm going to say top ten patterns to 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 be completely honest with you, it mm -hmm. just it works all the time, and I I know a lot of other people that feel the same way. Um, so, and it's not I don't I don't think it's an easy fly to tie properly. It's a simple fly, but it is not easy. Yeah, 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 and I I I know I tie it very differently than most people do. You guys. I'm sure we'll make the decision <laughs> as to uh, uh, which which way is best. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, Tim <laughs> told me told me last time that he has a special way of of tying in the the bubble around the body, yeah. which is the hardest part. Yeah. And I promised Tim that I wouldn't use his method. And and not only did I do that, Tim, but I didn't even go and look at your video. Okay, good, good. I, I uh, didn't because I, I didn't yeah. want to be biased. So I, I swear <laughs> to you, I promise. And I, I'm not. I'm going to tie it the way I always tie it. And um, I'm sure I'm going to probably learn some some great tips here from you, even though I'm going to beat you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I'm going to do, I'm going to pull every dirty trick I can to try to really? do you. I don't know how, but well, I, can, I can bribe these people. 
Well, and, and like you were saying, Tom, this this is not an easy tie. Uh, it, no, they're, they're no. tricky little. No matter how you tie it, they're tricky little parts to it, and, and mm-hmm. little little things that that get you hung up. Whether it, uh, I call that rather than the bubble, I call it the sheath. I don't know whether that's appropriate or not, but um, no, it's absolutely not appropriate. Uh, not appropriate. Okay. No, it's so, absolutely not appropriate. <laughs> so it's the bubble. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of look at it as a, a sheath that might trap a bubble inside, yeah. uh, which yeah. I notice a lot. You, you, you know, even fishing them subsurface, and I'll bring it up, take a good look at the fly, and even if I've been fishing it for a while, there'll be a little silver air bubble um, beneath that thing that I'm not allowed to call a sheath. Um, yeah. yeah, you can that call thing. it a sheath. I call it a sheath sometimes. But anyway, right. it's a it's a hard thing to get to. It it's not hard to get it so the, the it'll work, but it's hard to get it so that it looks good to you and me, right? Right, right. I mean, right. I mean, you, you don't you don't you don't have to go to the pains we go to to make sure that thing is nice and symmetrical because emerging caddis aren't symmetrical. They right. you know, often get really bunged up. But you know, to a fly tire, we want to make sure that it that it looks nice. So yeah. And the other the other tip that I can give people before you do anything, if you if you are tying these on barbed hooks, don't stick them in the same compartment in your fly box together, or they will become one. Um, uh, the the hook goes through the little sheath, and if there's a barb, it's not so bad if it's barbless, but with the barb, it it's you you might it's as well throw, throw, throw the whole yeah. dozen out as a clump because <laughs> they're yeah. they're not coming undone. Um, yeah. Well, I tie them on the uh, big eye hook, which is, has a mini barb, so it's very easy to just pinch. Oh, okay. Barb. Um, yeah, I'm on one of the for, tact- tactical dry fly hooks today. For for those of you who are not familiar with um, Gary LaFontaine and his book Caddis Flies, uh, Gary, the late Gary LaFontaine, wrote it. I think in the eighties. Um, I've got the book here. I'll take a look. Anyways, it's it's the most exhaustive study of caddis flies ever. I mean, he spent so much time and research, and um, nobody has has ever since studied caddis flies as exhaustively as he did and their behavior and the way they look underwater. So it's definitely a book to have in your library. Um, Gary also made a lot of, I think, some of the, some outlandish claims for some of the things that he discovered and some of the flies that he developed. Um, but um, uh, enough of it is, is just so credible and so good um, that, uh, it's definitely, definitely worth reading. And he was a, he was a wonderful gentleman, warm, generous, um, kind and, and, uh, modest gentleman. He was really a, really a good guy. And he, um, he passed away early of, um, Lou Gehrig's disease, I think in the nineties, maybe. Yeah. I don't remember when, but anyway, um, the, the fly fishing world lost one of its best minds, and um, but his book is out there and um, it's pretty cool. So definitely worth having in your library. Absolutely. There it is. I always have it handy. All right. Do you think we should tie? What do you think? You think people? Yeah, want to I, tie? I guess so. I mean, instead of sitting here and jabbering away <laughs> and wasting their time, are are we going to do the full screen thing this time when we, you know, when we get out of talking to each other, where uh, like the fly f- fills the screen? Yeah, or okay. or maybe uh, the one that's not tying could be uh, uh, in the small thumbnail, Julia. Yeah, How's that? yeah, that one. Yeah, that's, like that. That, yeah. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Yay. Yay, Julia. Yeah, I, I was going to switch my camera up if we were going to do splitsies, so. Yeah. Okay. So. So you first. Me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you bum. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. It's a nice little setup he has there. I shouldn't sure preview. Is. I shouldn't preview my fly, but. Because Fraggler's going to laugh at it, but I don't care. Cause, oh, it looked good. Yeah. Well, that was that was when I didn't have to reach over the camera. So the first thing, obviously, I'm tying on a uh, I'm tying on a, a big eye hook. I like the I like the big eye. Uh, it's easier thread. 
and um, I like the straight. I like the straight eye. It has good hooking qualities. And the first thing I'm going to do is start my thread. I am using 12O thread. Um, I almost always use 12O for my dry flies, regardless of. I can't find my scissors. Oh, there they are. Regardless of. Um, what pattern I'm tying, unless I'm tying in some heavy hair. Um, even with this small amount of deer hair here, I um, I always tie on uh, 8-0 if I can. I'm just going to center this a little bit better. There, I'm done. How does it look? That's Good, good. That's my, that's, that's my fly. That's it. I'm done. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is prepare some sparkle yarn. And Gary LaFontaine made a lot of... Made a lot of extravagant claims. I'm, I'm having trouble focusing on this. For Antron yarn, it, it was developed... By, there we go. It was developed by um, DuPont for stain-free carpets, and it had properties of um, it, he. It was it's trilobal, and I guess it. I guess it. it you know, it had a triangular, or it has a triangular shape, and somehow that shape helped it uh, resist stains, and it also gave it a sparkle. So um, I'm going to take some sparkle yarn. And you can get Antron in various forms. I like the stuff that comes in um, a, a three-ply or four-ply yarn. And I'm just going to take a short piece of it. And you want to make sure that you don't get those kinks in the yarn because they're going to give you problems later. So cut it, cut it where the kinks are. Oops, I didn't have that in focus. So there's my yarn. And then I'm going to just separate these into four pieces or three pieces. I guess this is a three ply. And this is very important to take that yarn and tease it up, get all those fibers, um, get all those fibers going in one direction. So you can comb it, uh, you can do it with a dubbing needle, you're going to lose a little bit of it, you could kind of scrape it with your fingers, but you want to be able to tease all those fibers apart before you start. Actually, the best way I found is with a dubbing needle. And just get, get all the fibers so that they're not, not bound up and corded up, but they're flat like so. I'm going to take off that autofocus. That's not not working for me. Okay. <laughs> or you can use the head of your scissors, you know, whatever. And then um, then I like to I cut the ends off. There's, there'll be some wild fibers on the end, and I'll cut those off like so. So you're left with, left with a bunch of yarn, one ply of this yarn. And then I'm going to come over to my hook and I'm going to find the center of that and go over a couple times like so just to attach it and then pull them both back and Make sure they stay separated, and then just go back over that 
so that you have a bunch on one side and a bunch on the other side, pretty much. Okay, so I've got a bunch on one side and a bunch on the other side, kind of like a V. All right. So, Tim, I will, um, I will turn it over to you. Okay, and let me just get all set up here first. Get zoomed in correct, like. And Come on, no time. You don't have any timeouts left, Lila. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so I'm I'm going to use a um, well, not a not a similar hook, but uh, Orvis Tactical size 14, and uh, slightly downturned eye, but a barbless hook, real sharp, nice nice hook. I have that in my vise already. Uh, a little different on the material is just regular Antron yarn. Uh, if I if I had one color for for the kind of trailing shuck in the sheath, it, it would be tan. Um, and you know, one one of Mr. Lafontaine's things was the shimmer and the translucency, whether it's Antron or the sparkle yarn. And and I think it 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 has a huge amount. Uh, I, I think if you can include Antron or Sparkle yarn in any pattern, it, it just it helps it out. Um, so I'm going to snip one piece free. By the way, Sparkle yarn is Antron. It's just a finer denier. It's just a finer fiber. Finer fibers. Okay. Yeah, but it's also but it's also Antron. And like Tom said, there are you you got to watch out for these little like junctures. You guys that uh, use um, polypropylene floating yarn for posts and spinner wings will probably know about these little junctions. Um, if you don't take them out, they're, they just raise all sorts of heck. So I'm going to keep this segment as a full, full strand, okay? And I'm going to set that aside. I have a, a half a strand width here. Uh, that I've already separated out. I, I won't bother you with how, how long that takes to get separated out, but this is the one that I'm going to use first. And this is going to just be the trailing shuck of the fly. And oh. so, for, yeah, I know, a little weird. <laughs> oh, no, I like it. And so, for yeah. the tying thread, I'm just using A dot tan, and I'm going to get it started. So I want to go back just a little bit from there. Not oh, at the beginning you, of you this. Do you people think? Do you people think he should get points off for having to restart that thread? I don't. So, <laughs> importantly, is to not have any thread on the front half of the hook shank. Okay, a little weird, I know, but um, this is this is how I I tie it differently. Um, anyway, I I kind of like having for the trailing shuck sort of rough edges like you see there and so I'm, I'm actually going to go like this and put the trailing shuck back there um, actually I want to give my bobbin a little counterclockwise spin and then that thread's going to jump back just a little bit and catch that so it's not jumping out into the uh, that no tie zone if you will and so that's a little trailing shuck just just a little little more maybe than a, a hook gap in length and then I'm going to snip this off that's just extra and why don't I get my um, while I'm here I am going to get my my sheath tied in this I, I do want to kind of even up make sure all the fibers are kind of going in the in the right direction little easier to do with the the and just straight inch ron yarn as opposed to the sparkle yarn but what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the midpoint of this segment and tie it in and i want to go really both both sides far side and then sweep this back and go near side And then get that locked down. And again, um, I'm I'm trying not to tie anything in that front part of the hook. And I th I think um, here. Let me show you what that looks like that way. So I got my little trailing shuck in the middle. It's awful shiny. 
and then uh, clumps of antron on either side. And I think we're about uh, even up there, Tom. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> you so I'm going to dub my body now, and I like um, I like the just plain old Spectre brand dry fly dubbing. Um, I, I think we said this was going to be a pale olive, didn't we, Tim? Yeah, that's what I have. Yeah. Uh, probably and honestly, my favorite color. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I don't tie these in many colors. I think that uh, I tie them either. I, I, sometimes I'll tie them in tan, but they're either just tan. Mine are either just tan or light olive, and that's all. I, I find that that's enough to cover most of the caddisflies I see. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this uh, uh, super fine dry fly dubbing. And I'm going to dub it to the hook. Oops. You didn't see that. <laughs> see what, Tom? <laughs> you didn't see that. I didn't get quite. I didn't get it quite tight there. And I'm going to start with just a, a very small amount of dubbing because I want a little taper in this body. But... Um, I got to cover that bump in the back. So I'm just going to slide that up there. And then you can't see this, but I'm tapering, tapering my, my body. And this super fine dubbing is so easy to use. And it's funny, Gar Gary LaFontaine was pretty adamant that um, you shouldn't, the bot, you shouldn't use a sparkly uh, dubbing for the body. You should just use a kind of an opaque, very dull colored dubbing. I'm not sure exactly why, but I guess he felt it, it showed through the, uh, the sheath or the bubble. And then I'm just going to wind that dubbing right up against that Antron and just wind a you know, fairly tapered body. But you know, if you look at caddis flies, um, they're quite skinny. The, the body of a caddis fly is actually um, is actually quite slim. Uh, the wings are big and broad, but the body of the thing is is pretty slim. So um, I think it's your turn, Tim. All right. Yeah, let me get uh, fixed up here and zoomed in. Um, Tim, somebody asked if will regular Antron work, yarn work, if you don't have a sparkle. Um, yeah, regular Antron tr works just fine. Um, and uh, b believe it or not, the, the other thing, I, this is probably uh, heresy, but uh, <laughs> one of the things that I use for the sheath, started using it a while ago, is the, the wool from um, the New Zealand strike indicators, the, particularly the white, the natural colored stuff. It makes a beautiful sheath. It's got some natural sparkle to it, plus it's got um, a lot of lanolin in it, so it wants to float. Um, and so if you're fishing it in the film, um, it, 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 look, it looks really nice and it's, it's easy to make the sheath with that stuff as well. So, yeah, pretty But cool actually, material. Brandon, um, Brandon, all Antron yarn is sparkle yarn. If it's true Antron, it's going to have those, those uh, trilobal facets and it's going to sparkle. Um, it, it may not sparkle quite as much as the stuff Tim is using. Mine doesn't sparkle. The stuff I'm using doesn't sparkle quite as much because it's it's a little bit finer uh, diameter fibers. But all Antron is sparkle yarn, and all most sparkle yarn is Antron. So um, dubbing wise, for me, uh, it's Aussie Possum. I, I I can't tell you why I think this or thought it or. But um, for subsurface flies, I, I've always used Australian possum uh, for dubbing. Uh, whether that has any merit or not, I really don't know. But I always have, uh, again, a light green, um, pretty similar to what Tom was using. And I'm just going to... Hey, hey, Tim, here's a, good, yeah. here's a good question for you. Yeah. Um, Gary LaFontaine used the touch dubbing method. Do you ever use the touch dubbing method? 
I, I do on occasion, and, and actually, so I, I'm not going to do it here, but sometimes on the heads of these, I will do the touch dubbing to, to make it really wild looking. Um, I, I don't do it here on the body. Um, I actually like to keep this, because I, I call it the underbody almost, um, like mm -hmm, yeah. uh, underneath the sheath. And so yeah. I keep, keep this fairly um, svelte, if you will. Mm -hmm. And and uh i have I, I hope i don't have the problem here but i have had problems in the past overdubbing the body oh i hope you have the problem oh i, I would really hate to have i to need peel, I, to peel off i need a handicap i need a <laughs> i need a handicap here <laughs> but yeah sometimes if you dub with utmost confidence it just comes out right so there we go that's not too bad. What's that gap uh, at the end of the dubbing next to the Antron? What's that big gap there? I'm not seeing the gap. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing like that gap that was on that. Oh, I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a closer look, though, just to make absolutely sure that there's no gap. There. No, I'm just, I was just, I was just I know. <laughs> trying to throw you off. I need every I need every opportunity I can here. Yeah. Um, uh, well, I, I tell you what, Tom, the, the the real mess up part for me is coming up. So yeah, um, well, me too. Yeah, it, me it's too. about to happen. Yeah. So you're gonna yeah. go then? No, oh, damn. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. This is this is the nasty part. I gotta put on my special glasses for this one. Okay. So. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. Oh God, I hate this. <laughs> I hate this flush. All right, so the first thing I'll do is I'll try to try to even um, pull tease this apart even more on each side because you don't you don't want to end up like two pieces of rope encircling that fly, and then you're gonna fold these two like so and you try to make sure that it's you know it's it's covering every place and i don't like a big bubble on this and then what i do is i push back a little bit just to give it give it a little bit of a more of a bubble and come over the top and pull straight down and pinch and pull straight down and then you the next thing you want to want do is inspect it and make sure that you don't have this kind of deal here and you can you can just move your dubbing you move your uh, sparkle stuff around the top stuff isn't such a big deal because the top stuff and it looks good underneath. The top stuff is going to be covered with a wing. And then to get my shuck, this is the way LaFontaine did it. I'm going to I'm going to poke in here and pull What are you laughing at? Can can you do that again? Your your fingers were kind of in the way. No. <laughs> oh well. And <laughs> so this is my sailed. shuck. This is the, yeah, that ship sailed. This is my shuck, and it's pretty sparse. And then I'm going to secure it with a couple more turns and trim off the remainder. Fairly close. And then cover that up. And if you know, if you want a little, no, it's too late now. I was going to say, if you wanted a little bit more of a bubble, but I don't like, I don't like a big, big bubbly bubble. Uh, I just like a sheath around the fly. So um, that's about that's about what I like to see on these. If you wanted more before you trimmed those ends off, you could take your dubbing needle, and and just poke this a little bit to, 
to pull it back up, but I'm not going to do that. Yeah, that, that's the way I've seen most people do it. Is yeah, is actually pull it out. Um, yeah, I but, just give it a little. I just give a little pushback, and it seems. Yeah, to, if you don't like okay. a big bubble, I don't think you're going to like mine much. So, um, well, you know what? Our our uh, our viewers are the we'll, ultimate. We'll judges. we'll be the judge. Um, yeah. So that's mine. I kind of do the same thing. I'm gonna do a little little pulling, kind of get that um, antron separated out a little bit if I can. But here's where it gets weird, guys. Um, what I do is I take my tying thread, and I. Hey, can we block Dave? Can we block Dave Jensen? <laughs> What's he squawking about now? Oh, he's he's like trash talking he's, to Tom. He's trash talking to <laughs> oh, oh, that Dave Jensen. Oh no, keep 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 yeah. it up, Dave. Monahan, block it. Dave Jensen. Just block him. I can block you, Jensen. I can block you. I have the power right here. I can block you. I can put you into timeout, Jensen. <laughs> oh my. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to make take my tying thread and open spiral wraps just like two or three all the way up to the hook eye okay and then this is the tricky part i'm going to try to grab both sides of that antron yarn make sure i get all the strands i think i got them all and right behind the hook eye i'm just going to take two or three turns a tying thread okay so got all my fibers I believe yep pulled forward then what I do is I just grab hold of these guys kind of hold on to the hook and inflate the bubble by pulling backwards oh. so as you can see I end up with a fairly robust bubble again you you can kind of smush the fibers around a little bit get get a little better coverage top and bottom but again i think the idea is to sort of trap an air bubble in there so i don't worry about complete coverage that really doesn't bother me that much one important thing though guys is is the the um antron on a bare hook is like super slippery so if i was to go to take a thread wrap now the whole thing would want to spin and what I found is if I just take a couple of couple of jam wraps just around the hook shank underneath the antron and then it might even spin here and then just a few more over top it, it doesn't want to spin anywhere as near as much and then I'll just trim that extra little bit of antron off and get it covered up that's a good trick yeah, I, I tie a, a, an egg pattern um, in a very similar way, but sort of reversed. Um, and yeah, it just makes in, inflating it a little bit easier. And it, it's, you know, a, it's not great coverage all the way around, but I, I believe that it's enough to, to get the job done. And if you get any of those uh, wild Australian haars sticking out, you just snip them off. Oh, they're so good that's it. it. Uh, you're up, buddy. All right. Dave Jensen's. <laughs> what did Jensen say now? <laughs> I missed it. Like, I, first look at you. Yeah. We. I think we got a lot of big bubble people. I think I'm already screwed. Yeah. I like a more subtle bubble. Bubble. I'm sorry. All right. So um, I've got to put my wing on which is fairly straightforward. Um, I'm going to take some nice, uh, fine, short, fine deer hair, compare done hair, uh, sparkle done hair, the stuff that you would use for X caddis or any of those um, smaller flies. And I'm going to cut fairly small bunch, um, about, the, about a hook gap, La Fontaine used a very sparse deer hair wing. Um, I don't. I don't go as sparse as he did. But um, uh, I, I got to agree with him on that, Tom. I mean, if if you think about it, if this is just an emergent wing, 
you know, an undeveloped wing, mm -hmm. it, it can't be very thick, really. I mean, no, not no. that caddis wings are thick to begin with, but um, yeah. And I'm going to stack this. See, I use mine more as a dry fly. So yeah, I yeah. do. You need I the wing have, to float I it. Do, I do put, you know, for visibility as much as anything. Yeah. And to help float it. Okay, so I've stacked my stacked my hair, and I'll carefully remove it. I see I have one errant hair there that I will usually pretty easy to pluck out those errant ones. So now I've got a nice bunch. And you have the tips pointing to the right. Well, I'm going to switch hands. <laughs> I'm going to switch hands. See, I'm going to switch hands. I know you can't see that. And then I'm going to measure my wing. And I want it to be just about to the end of the body. No farther. And then I'm going to switch. And I'm going to cut that off. Let me go to the other camera. I'm going to cut that off just beyond my fingers. Just beyond where I want to tie it in. I'm going to transfer it back and just roll the thread on top of that wing and just give it a fairly firm turn. And that wing will then, whoops, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. I didn't grab them all. I'm going to start over. Just let me quickly. I might as well go home right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. You're doing great, Tom. Mm -hmm. while, you, while you guys are staring at my fly, I'm just stacking another. Here, I might as well go into that camera. All right, let's try that again. Measure it. Switch hands, cut it off right in front. Tie it in. This time I got it all. And then using very firm pressure just come forward and you know your wing should be set the nice thing about putting that wing on top of a dubbed body is that it tends not to roll and stays put and then i'll i'll trim these hairs once i got it secured i'll trim these down a little bit waiting for me to cut my thread flagler <laughs> Always. And then I'll cover them up again. All right. Am I up? You're up. Well, actually, um, I, I'm not glad that Tom had a little bobble there, but it, it, um, it, let's, let's look at it as a learning moment. Um, so one of the things that I do before I tie, tie my wing on is I'm going to take a little bit of that same green dubbing that I used for the underbody, just a tiny, tiny bit. Um, and I'm going to make a super short little thin dubbing noodle on my tying thread. But what, what this is going to allow me to do is it, it makes that whole thing less slippery G gives the gives the deer hair something to bite down into and and you know if you're tying on slippery antron onto a slippery bear hook shank your your chances of spinning it are, are pretty good um and and so 
a, a little dubbing gen generally helps to uh, to keep everything kind of grippy and stay in one place. But but same same deal, guys. For me, it it's compared on hair. Uh, this this patch is a little darker, but um, it's r real nice size for for this. Good looking tips and in really just the uh, the right texture, right has the right amount of uh, hollowness to them. Not too hollow, not too unhollow. And again, I'm just using a, a, a very, very small amount. Goes into my stacker. And I always do a few taps. And I'm going to I'm going to pull my tips out going back this way so that so I I don't really have to uh I I'm going to pass it. I got one bad hair in there. But but yeah, very very small amount. And same thing. I might go just a little longer than than the back, uh but I'm going to grip it here. And I just use my try to use my hook as the like a little workbench if you will to steady my hands i'm going to give my bobbin a counterclockwise spin again it just helps to uh, get that thread to jump rearward i'm going to take a couple turns around there and then i'm just going to start separating just a little bit just down through those through those snipped off butt ends and hopefully when I release the clump, I have a little little emergent wing there. Oh, sorry about that. Did you use coastal deer? Uh yeah, it's it's the um the Orvis Comparadon hair. Okay, not coastal. Um not yeah, coastal, I saw no. some um for there were a couple questions about um I noticed about what is a compare done here. Compare done here is just short, fine, very even hair. And you can see it on the package there. Um, it, it's sold that way by most places, but it's it's deer hair from the neck or the face, sometimes the legs, but it's very short, fine hair. And I saw somebody recommend coastal deer, which I would not recommend. It's got long black tips and I've never found it to be very useful. I don't know about you, Tim, but yeah co coastal's weird and i and yeah. i didn't i think for a long time i didn't really know what coastal deer hair meant and this could be totally wrong but i i read somewhere um that when they say coastal what they mean are just generally smaller deer that that um particularly those found around the the uh the gulf coast and so that's that's where the term coastal comes in that, i think I it's black i think it's blacktail i think it's mule deer Oh really? So more yeah, like I Pacific Northwest, deer. right? Yep. Oh yep. okay. I think, I think um, it's mule deer, which is nowhere near as good as whitetail. Um, yeah. For for this kind of stuff, I mean it'll work, but it's not nearly as good. Okay, so um, I'm gonna really I'm gonna really step out on the edge here because I've al I'm already I'm already so far I'm already so deep that. Um, <laughs> It looks good. I might, though, Tom. I might as I mean... well just. I might as well just go for it. Um, <laughs> this is the way La Fontaine tied his, um, tied the heads on his, um, on his uh, emergent caspia. But he used marabou fibers, and I know Flagler's going to use dubbing because it's much easier and <laughs> and looks much better. Um, but I, I, I'm going to go for it because I'm already screwed. So. What the hell? Um, I'm gonna look for some. I'm gonna look for some nice fluffy uh, feathers at the bottom of a marabou feather, and I'm gonna grab about anywhere from six to a dozen of them, separate them, and cut them off. Well, that looks like about the right amount. You could also use ostrich hurl for this, but I'm going to use uh, 
I'm going to use marabou and I'm just, I'm going to wet it very lightly. Oops. And then I'm going to tie. I'm going to, oh, first I'm going to cut the tips off because the tips are really weak. And I'm going to tie it in by the tips, by the finer ends. I'm going to just cut, cut the tips off there. And then I am going to, can you believe I'm doing this flagler? Doing it with I, a marabou head. No. <laughs> I must I be out of marabou. my mind. I know. But I'm going to do it. And just tie, tie those tips in with just a few turns. Somebody asked if it was GSP thread, and the answer is no, all the way around. Um, no, I'm using yeah. Orvis 12O. And I'm using Orvis, Orvis 8 -0. I don't like GSP unless I'm tying bass bugs. And even yeah. then, I don't like it. <laughs> I use it. It's slippery, nasty stuff. And then I'm going to take these, um, these marabou fibers and I'm going to twist them. And I'm going to wind my head with it. Whoops. Probably hackle pliers would have been a little better with this short marabou. But it does make a really buggy looking head. It sure does. Take two turns. Two turns of that stuff. And then I am going to trim those off nice and close. Push them back. And I'm going to whip finish. So I'm done. I'm done. I can't wait to be done with this friggin' fly. <laughs> fly glory. Can't, can't believe you picked this fly. I can't but wait until we get a chance to fish them. That's the that's what I'm. Yeah. can't wait for. Yeah, me too. So there we go. There's uh, Tom's version of the emergent Look, caddis pupa. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Not a very big bubble. All right. Let's see if I can finish finish this sucker off. Um. I am going to show you guys, I, you notice that, that this bump that I have in there, that, that big step down, uh, which is going to want to haunt me, but I just want to, hopefully I don't blow the whole demonstration right here, but. Oh, that would the, be a shame. Yeah. Some of the tying wax, <laughs> like uh, our Scottish friend Davey McPhail uses. Really pretty amazing how, how you can get your your thread to stick and go oh did you see that <gasps> no one saw that <laughs> oh <laughs> oh <coughs> i knew i shouldn't have done that we're Do back it again. <laughs> Do it again. uh even with the dubbing under there the sucker wanted to spin yeah, Anyhow, that dubbing trick. That dubbing trick really, yeah, that worked. really worked, did, didn't it? Um, <laughs> let's forget. <laughs> get that the last two minutes even happened. Um, I'm gonna make you tie right. mother minnow next time. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna not not tightly dub. Are, are you still laughing, Tom? No. No. I was drinking. Oh. You've driven me to drink. And so just a little, little dubbed head on there. Actually, I, I want to shorten that. <gasps> yeah, there we go. Uh, do over. Just a little shorter.
I can't believe I did that. I hope everybody saw that. Of course, we're going to talk everybody out of tying this pattern. Yeah, I know. <laughs> See, and I don't like that the head's too long for me. That's points off right there. Bruce wants to know what we're, he wants some of what we're smoking. Boy, don't we wish. Yeah. Uh, Tom, I'm, I'm, uh, blech. Hate it. I don't know. That's a pretty, it's a pretty nice Kardashian bubble you got there. Yeah, it's, it's a big bubble, but I, I, I absolutely failed at the head of that fly. I don't know. It looks good to me. Ugh, like everything else. But yeah, um, being critical, I want that head to be a little shorter. It's a lot different tying live than when you have a chance to redo it and edit it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it really is. <laughs> and uh, Adds a little I drama wanna... to the thing. <laughs> I want to pull that whole thing forward. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think we both said at the beginning it, it is not an easy tie. Uh, there, no. there, any, any, any place in there, you you can screw it up, and uh, it's just kind of the way the the fly is. It's it's a great pattern, but but yeah, it does have some pitfalls. Um, I, I Kajel, think Kajel, Kajel is, is calling one of us an amateur, or maybe both. I don't know. Oh, maybe he can, no. maybe he can clarify that just so we just so we know which one you think is the amateur <laughs> can, we, uh, uh, can we do a side by side so i can put the pole out yeah you might as to well reveal great julia yeah, thanks just do the, the pageantry the reveal okay i gotta All get right. my uh, i gotta go back live so once they're yeah, both side by side, side, I'll put the oh, pole oh, out. Oh, side by side. Have... Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And then I'll uh, put the pole Don't make uh -oh. his bigger than mine. No, it's Hold on. Hey, Tim's is bigger. There. Okay, let me zoom out then. Let me zoom out too because... Uh... See, I definitely like the head on yours more. I got lucky. You guys really should vote for Tom on this one. No. My recommendation. There you go. You got it, buddy. <laughs> you know, it's really... People, people <laughs> Jen, should understand... Jen, Jensen is still on your case. <laughs> uh -huh. You know, I'm supposed to do a podcast with Jensen tomorrow. I can get even with it. <laughs> Shaking the camera. Okay, are I guess are they voting now, Julia? Yes, they're voting now. I'll give people one more minute. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna get mine in focus. That would help. There. I hear you laughing, Joan. <laughs> hey, you Jensen. can hear that. <laughs> Dave Jensen just put it in for uh, Tom. But one of the things, one of the things people should realize is that uh, these these look quite different, and they're they're actually going to be fished differently. Tim's is going to be fished more subsurface, um, and and mine is more of an emerger dry fly. In other words, I fish mine sitting in the film. With that, with that wing sticking up so I can see it, whereas Tim is going to fish his with an indicator or Euro nymphing or something. So they're, they're, they're different styles um, of the of the same pattern. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I and just just by the look of the the two of my, I mean, yours would definitely fish better in the surface. Um, oh and, yeah, you know, yeah. A large larger wing and and uh, smaller bubble and. Um, I guess it depends on, on whether we have more nymph anglers or dry fly anglers. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> Joan's giving me a conciliatory pat. <laughs> like I've already lost. <laughs> Okay, just to remind people, you have to, you have to, if you're on Facebook, you have to actually click the button. You can't just put it in the comments. And yeah. there's no, ma there's no mail-in ballots either. Uh, no, people. this is decided here and now. Yeah, I, I'm going to count the hanging chads. Come on. Uh, Joe, these are on size 14 hooks, but you can tie them on uh, 12 through uh, 18 if you dare. Oh, I don't 18. tie them small. I don't. I don't tie them smaller than sixteen. But uh, I. It, it's. I probably should tie some in eighteens, but it's just. It's just yeah. more than I want to. More than I want to do. Um, yeah. If, if if not, I mean, on the eighteen, the shucks one thing, but then you add the little deer hair wing on there, and it gets oh, just yeah. yucky. Yeah, it's. Yeah. What happened to Jensen? Did he go quiet? He voted for you after all that. How do you know? He he said it in the in the comments. I saw it as plain as day. Well, we have similar we have similar fishing um, philosophies. Uh, Chris Wood, these are more spring and summer fly. Um, you see more caddis flies in the spring and summer. Once in a while in the winter time, but not often. Um, but it's more of a more of a spring and summer fly. Yeah. And Ralph but Julia I, I, doesn't get a vote. We have these like right now. We have these little teeny uh, people call them winter caddis. Um, really really small guys though and so again mm. we'd be back back to the size 18s and things like that for the sparkle pupa mm. um, <laughs> that's right jensen <laughs> and well, you don't want to make her angry um where's jensen's latest comment oh he, he said that he's hiding from joan <laughs> He better. <laughs> better hide from me, too. See if Jensen gets any chocolate. <laughs> All right. Give me just one second. It's having a it's having a little bit of a technical difficulty here. So I'm did we blow up? Did we blow up the internet on the votes for this? Actually, I this oh I, I made a mistake. This was the fly I actually tied. You can't do that. <laughs> no. No. Dang. It looks the same to me. Uh, the 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 head was a little better. <laughs> that was my practice. Tim, and the bubble was a little hot. bigger. You're being too hard on yourself, Tim. <laughs> Oh, I had to get fancy with that dubbing wax. Jeez. <sighs> Are you nervous? I'm nervous. I am too. These <laughs> things always make me nervous. This is taking longer than the last election, though. I know. Be nice to Julia. That's I'm trying. Facebook is not being very helpful, so we're working on it. But it won't. It, it's like re, it's keeping the poll results from me too. So um, hold on. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Well, do we have any other questions? Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of comments. <laughs> uh, but I don't yeah, sure. Yeah. Nobody's afraid to comment. That's for sure. Will wax uh, help with G will wax help with GSP? Yeah, I think wax would help with GSP, make it look, grip a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, wax generally it's it's I, I it's that vineyard stuff that that's uh, or 
really, really works. Um, yeah. Although guys, I use it for bass bugs. I only use it for bass bugs and I don't, um, don't wax. I don't, I don't, don't want to wax my thread when I'm tying a bass bug because you want it to slip. So Scott says, shouldn't the head be darker? Absolutely. Scott, these, these, these flies, their fire. heads are way oh. too light. Way too light. Uh, Tim, what color dubbing is that on your head? Uh, this is just um, a tan. Um, and I generally do go a little bit darker um, mm -hmm. with, with the head, uh, more like a chocolate brown. Um. Uh, Roger Bird, I, I just put regular dry fly floating on it, you know, the, the same way you would fish anything else. And if I want to fish it a little lower in the film or as a nymph like Tim does, then I just don't put anything on it. So um, just a standard dry fly. I saw a question about how do we store a thread. The only thing I, I think that storing thread is to keep it out of sunlight because UV can, can damage nylon thread. I don't think it damages polyester thread. Um, and I don't think it damages GSP thread. Um, but nylon, if you use nylon, um, nylon thread, uh, the sunlight can, can break it down. I, I've also had uh, problems with moisture and, and my thread. Mm, and, um, interesting. Yeah, it, I, I I used to I don't anymore, but I used to tie down in my basement. It was fairly All damp. Right. And Kate Shula is back. All, All right. right, we got it. And the winner is Tom. With Yay, Tom! <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Nope. I can't believe it. Congratulations. I, I, I am telling I, I would have voted I would have voted for Tim. Well, I, I was, it was, it was it close? Was it close, Julia? It was uh, I think sixty-four or sixty-three percent uh, sixty basically like sixty forty. And Tim, you know the head is the easiest part. It's like missing that two inch putt, right? Oh <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's showboating though, Tom. Jensen's right. You know, I just I should stick with what I know and just go <laughs> straight down the line. No more messing around. Uh, somebody said we're having too much fun. I would agree. We're having too much fun. But you know, um, we got to entertain ourselves and you guys somehow. And we hope that um, we hope that we've entertained you today. Get off oh, there's a question. Would Tim's fly be fish swinging or nymphing? I, I do I do it nymphing. Um, it is specifically like uh, Euro nymphing or tight line nymphing. Um, uh, uh, what are you laughing at? Dave Jensen. Jensen again. <laughs> wow. We, we got to like not tell him when these things are happening. I know. He's really wound up today. Yeah. Jeez. What are you going to tie next? Yeah, it's your your call, Tom, on the next fly. I, I know, know you're I itching for that muddler, but wow, we'd be here for hours. You know, the problem is the problem is that oak model turkey are almost impossible for people to get hold of these days. Um, it's really difficult to find, and without oak model turkey, you can't tie a muddler, right? I mean, absolutely, it's not, it's I, not I a agree muddler. wholeheartedly. So there's no so, point in ever tying one. As as much as I would like to have you tie a muddler, because I know you hate them, um, I don't. I don't think. But um, we'll decide in the next week or so what we're going to tie the next time. Oh, a scud, maybe a scud. Mm. Well, I've got a good scud. Mm. Yeah. Get something really difficult to tie. Yeah, we we did that. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jock Scott says Phil Monahan, our friend Phil Monahan. Yeah, yeah. Full thanks for that, Phil. Full, full dress, of course. <laughs> well, thank you. I want to thank everyone for um, for tuning in. I know they're dropping like flies because it's it's four o'clock, and they always they always leave a balanced leech. That yeah, that's too easy. Um, we'll um, we'll consider so Henryville special. <sighs> That's a toughie too. Parmachini Bell, boy, they're coming out of the woodwork tonight. Wow, Golden um, Stone. 
blooming olive. We need a microscope. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we could do it with our. Well, we'll figure. We'll figure. Prince Nip. I've already tied Prince Nip on one of my Facebook lives, so a beadhead print. So we don't want to do a Prince. We've already done that. They're still coming in. Yeah, wowza. They're still coming in. Well, anyway. Uh, suggestions. Yeah. Um, lots of great suggestions. And thank you, everyone, for, for joining in in the fun. And thank you for your good-natured ribbing, except for Dave Jensen. Um, <laughs> get, let Amelia sit at the keyboard next time. She's nicer than you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway, um, we want to thank you all for, for joining us. It was really fun. Uh, we're glad you could make it today. And we will see you in a month uh, for the next tie-off. I'll be here next Monday by myself um, to tell you all about deer hair, comparadon oh, hair and muddler hair and bass bug hair and bucktail. We're going to go through all the different kinds of uh, deer hair and how to select it and how to tie with it. So, um, I think, I think that'll be, a, that'll be a pretty popular one because we get a lot of questions about deer hair. Yes. Thank you guys. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Thank you, Tom. And congratulations on your, on your, on your win. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if I deserve it, but I'll take it. <laughs> we'll see you in a month. We'll see you all in a month. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care.